turn that shit off. SoundCloud has the worst royalty-free music ever. I don't need these. Hello, everybody. If I could get a yay or nay from the audience on the audio, I'd be appreciative. Hello, oh, Linux Noob and Zany's here. Hello, Zany. And we got Ryan. Hello, Ryan. And F, F Society. Hello. And Ryan. Hello. And Joshua. Hello. No, this is not Gen 2. Yay, question mark. <laughs> I love to do that. It's hilarious. Uh, make sure my phone is turned off. Awesome. So I'm going to be messing around with Cute Browser tonight. I have used Cute Browser many times in the past, but I've never taken the time to go through and actually customize it like in depth. I've done a little bit, but I've never gone through and like truly tried to customize it. So that's what I'm going to try to do tonight. SoundCloud has better sound quality than you installing Gen 2. Uh, one of these days, I'm going to install Gen 2 and then just use it, like, stealthily in the background and nobody's going to know. Just to mess with people. Not that I know how to install Gen 2. <laughs> I, I think I want to take a poll in my community tab to ask how many people that are actually subscribed to my channel actually use Gen 2. Because I'm very curious, because it seems like the vast majority of people seem to use Gen 2. <laughs> Which I find hilarious. Oh, analytic minded, how you doing? Yo, I was legit about to go back, go look up how to configure Cute Browser today. Uh, well, you didn't. If you're looking for a tutorial, this is the wrong place because I don't know shit. I'm gonna be winging it. It's the most fun stream. All of my streams are winging it. That's just the way it is. Like, I've been using Gen 2 for years, and you guys just didn't even know. That's not true. Um, I use Arch, by the way. I Well, I use an Arch derivative, by the way. I'm much too lazy to maintain an Arch installation. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Congrats. <laughs> Linux, dude, that's great. <laughs> I'm, very, I'm very close to that 4,000 mark for subscribers. I'd be there if I quit losing subscribers. I keep going up and down. I keep posting videos that piss people off. It's just the way it is. F Society, what is Plan 9? I've, I've, that's the second time in two days I've heard Plan 9. I don't know what that is. I think it's probably both times from you, but... I use Manjaro, by the way. Manjaro is good. I like Manjaro. I just always feel behind when I use Manjaro because they delay their updates a little bit to maintain stability. I just always feel, you know, behind. Hello, Meglin. How you doing? Hello, Santiago. Got the crew here tonight. Yeah. I wonder if TFL will show up. He's got If he has insomnia tonight, he probably will. Plan 9 is... Eight plans better than plan one. <laughs> I plan I remember a movie called there was a movie called Plan Nine, wasn't there? I don't think I ever watched it. Surprisingly enough, if you if you duck duck go plan nine, you actually get the Linux issue or whatever it is, and not the movie. An alternative to GNU, huh? Plan nine from outer space. 
Gregory Walcott, Tom Keen, and Mona McKinnon. I've never heard of any of those people. It's 1957. Hmm. Rented four out of ten, so not great. Not a great movie either. There was a more modern movie called Plan Nine, wasn't there? Like maybe a remake. I'm curious. You guys are probably wondering what I'm doing. You can watch here. I misspelled movie wrong. This one here, yeah, 2015. That's the one I was thinking of. Still had people in it that I had have no clue who any of those people are. Actually has a higher rating than the other Plan 9. Interesting. Okay. Well, that was a... Plan 9 is not Linux. Whatever. Old movie. Okay. So. We have Cute Browser. I've done... The only thing I've done to customize this version of Cute Browser is enable ad blocking. That's literally it. But I know DT has done some videos on Cute Browser, so that's probably what I'm going to follow. If I can actually type. Actually has two. I wonder which one's better. Well, this one's longer, so it actually has to be better. I should have my headphones on, I suppose. So I have been a Firefox user forever, and Firefox is a great web browser, but here in the past few weeks, I've really been wanting to switch to something more minimal as far as a web browser. And by minimal, I'm talking about a web browser that gets out of your way. I'm talking about something that offers no tabs or the option to at least hide tabs, uh, no URL bars, no window decorations of any kind, no status bars, no kind of system trays or anything at the bottom. I just want a plain window frame that loads a web page. And a couple of weeks ago, I made a video discussing four Four possibilities that I might switch to and try out and those were surf cube browser vimb and the min browser and surf I've actually used quite a bit in the last couple of months and surf is just not a good option it's slow it's buggy and it's just frustrating to use that is but true a lot of you guys surf really is terrible are pushing me to give cute browser a try like a real hard look and that's what i've been doing the last couple of days i really kind of deep dived a little bit into cute browser and i gotta say i'm impressed so let me switch over to my desktop and let's go ahead and just launch cute browser so this is cute browser out of the box i really haven't done a ton of configuration with it by default it does show tabs here in this top line and by default it does have a bottom status line that shows you the web page you're on uh, also the default search engine is DuckDuckGo, but you can change this to anything of course cute browser is very very extensible i'm going to show you a little bit of what you can do with the config let's discuss some of the very basics with cute browser now cute browser aims to be keyboard centric it aims to be very vim like in the commands so to open something in vim you typically go into command mode command mode of course involves a colon and then you type a command such as open which you could do here I could type colon open and then a URL such as distrotube.com and hit narcissist and it goes there of course shorthand for that would just be typing O on the keyboard you see if I just type O it actually gives me the full command colon open and then I, I don't have to bother typing the full word by the way you don't have to type a URL if it's already in your history here my recent history you know I could have found DistroTube here if I wanted to I could go to my YouTube page there are other pages that go places, a, places to go to DT. Load that page but YouTube kind of takes a, a while to load in, in most browsers but in surf my YouTube page would take like 30 seconds to load sometimes it was just hideously slow in surf cube browser seems to have a little bit more pep in its step now since we've gone forward a page what if you want to go back well you go back using the keyboard remember the vim navigation keys h j k l well h and l for left and right are back and forward so shift h 
brings me back a page. Shift L goes forward a page. So it takes me back to the YouTube page. Shift H takes me back. Now let me show you a little bit about the configuration of Cute Browser. So the default config for Cute Browser is going to be in dot config slash cute browser slash autoconfig dot yml. So it's a yml document here. And by default, it really doesn't have anything. It's pretty much an empty document. You can edit it by hand, but they really tell you don't edit this file by hand. Uh, I've been editing it by hand, but typically uh, you actually edit this thing in the browser itself. For example, you do things like set and then whatever command you're setting with whatever key bind you're setting, or you can do colon bind to add a, a key bind or unbind something. And all of that stuff does work, you know, in the browser. It actually auto writes everything to this file automatically for you. Uh, for example, the URL search engines here, I set other than DuckDuckGo, which is the default search engine, I wanted to set a few other things to be searchable. I wanted to set the ArchWiki to be searchable, uh, Reddit, the Urban Dictionary, and YouTube. So there was a command I needed to do. Uh, I'm not sure if I can go back in the history and find that command. All right, I found the command here, and it's too long to really show you guys on camera, but basically it's colon set and then URL.searchengines. You see URL.searchengines in this document here. Let me zoom in. And then in single quotes, and then in the squiggly brackets, I set default to be DuckDuckGo, AW, the AW key binding, to be the ArchWiki, RE to be Reddit, UB to be Urban Dictionary, YT to be YouTube, and what these do is now when I either do colon open or just O on the keyboard and I do AW for ArchWiki and then do space and then I, a search term. So maybe I want to search for, I don't know, LightDM. Maybe I'm doing a install of LightDM and I'm unsure about something. It opens the ArchWiki page at the LightDM page. How cool is that? And to show you the Urban Dictionary in action, I'll do UB and then Salty. That's a good term to look up in the Urban Dictionary. Being salty is when you are upset over something little. So the Ubuntu user was salty over snaps even though he's not forced to use it. That's uh, salty in a sentence. And let me move my configuration file out of the way here. And one thing you probably noticed actually in my config file, well let me go back to it just briefly, is these bindings here. Let me highlight them. XB cycles the status bar to hide. XT cycles the tabs to show, XX cycles both the status bar and the tabs. So basically what these bindings do is XB, XT, XX, they are able to give me that more minimal look I'm after. So if XT toggles the tabs, XT toggles the tabs back. This video isn't really what I was looking for, works. XB Honestly. does the same thing for the status bar, XB brings it back. If I want to toggle both the tabs and the status bar at the same time, XX removes both. XX brings both back. So it's very easy to really get this thing to be just a window frame displaying some HTML, and I really like that. Now, if you want to see some of the settings for Cute Browser, um, you don't have to open up config files or anything. You can do it all right here in the browser. So if I type O for open, and I just start typing Cute, uh, you see some of the recent documents that I opened were cute colon slash slash settings, cute colon slash slash bookmarks, cute colon slash slash bindings. Uh, the most interesting one here, especially when you're first getting started, is the cute settings. And this is where you can go through here, and if I use the mouse, I could scroll, or if I wanted to, I could page up and page down. We haven't talked about navigating up and down. J and K work for just scrolling a little bit, or if you you wanted to you can control F and control B to really move you know forward in the document quite a bit or back in the document all right let's look at the other one because I wanted to see where he talks about creating a Python configuration file I think it's probably this one so I've made a couple of really introductory videos about the Cute Browser in the past. Just introducing you guys to what the Cute Browser is. I haven't really gone deep into configuring the Cute Browser before, and I've gotten a ton of questions and people wanting to know how to do this and how to do that. So today... All right, hold on a second. Linux noob, that was a low blow, man. <laughs> One of the smaller Linux YouTubers used 
I didn't like it very much. That's funny. <laughs> Uh, you guys thought I wasn't paying attention. Uh, Analytic minded, I did try install Veeb for a little while, but after uh, like an update or whatever, it broke. It, like it wouldn't update for what for. I guess I don't know why. DT is echoing for you. I could probably just find a text tutorial. How to configure Qt browser. I mean, when in doubt, actually look at the configuration file, I guess. All right. It definitely scrolls slower than Firefox does. I wonder if that's something you can change. Configuring Qt Browser via the user interface. The easy and less but less flexible way to configure Qt Browser is using the user interface. So that's why we're going to do the other way. For more powerful configuration possibilities, you can create a config.py file. Since it's a Python file, you have much more flexibility for configuration. Note that Qt Browser will never touch this file. This means you'll be responsible for updating it when upgrading to a newer Qt Browser version. You can run so config dash edit inside Qt Browser to open the file in your to reload the file yeah probably need to do that so it's config write dash pi defaults Okay, so cd dot config cute browser do an ls here. I don't actually see a config dot pi there. This file should be located on Linux. So you just got to do con config edit gvim. It's looking for gvim. <laughs> yeah, look at the <laughs> uh, see now Zany gets the thing when he doesn't look at the chat and I'm trying to tell him to do something. <laughs> <laughs> I'm ignoring him now. Ah, that's funny. I, I see it. All right. Let's, uh, copy link. So I can just go through and create. Which one of these? What? what? I do not know anything about. There we go. That's what I'm looking for. Apparently, Control A is not a selectable thing in Cube Browser. Okay, that's quite a configuration. So I can just actually just do this, right? Oh, I got errors. <laughs> That looks like the same Python error I always get with con lately with running Python programs. Unhandled exception. So anybody watching know what the hell this means? I'm gonna have to. Search I let's see Python unhandled exception.
See, the thing is, this isn't unique to Cute Browser. I've been having this with pretty much any configuration, any Python program that I run. It's really annoying. The config file will probably run fine in Gen 2. <laughs> I alternate between ZZ and WQ. I do both. I got, I've gotten in the habit of using WQ uh, lately because of doing uh, like some tutorials and it's easier to show people to quit them with WQ than it is ZZ because it just doesn't, you know, there's no output with ZZ. Uh, let's see here. Errors and exceptions. That's not going to help me like that. How can I handle any unhandled exception? Normally unhandled exceptions go to this. I don't know any... <laughs> I think this is not going to help at all. Maybe just search for Three ninety six is literally the last line. I wonder if it's this. I bet you. Like a random E. Error occurred. Well, it's a different. At least a different error. Well, setting downloads that location directory invalid. That's because you got to change that. Okay. <laughs> Can't use your username there, Zany. You use, you use Zany for your usernames. I know that now. Now I can steal your identity. That's not even the location of my... Uh, let's see. Here. Change word media. Oh, wait a minute. This... Okay, and we'll search for this again. Nothing. Good. All right. Now. I wonder why there was a random E there in the configuration file. This was weird. Yeah. I don't, Some with copy and paste. Um, so I guess we got to go back here and actually look and see what you got here. Start at the top. Holy moly, that your your ASCII art did not come through very well. <laughs> I'm assuming that's supposed to say zany something or the other, but those are just lines to me. All right, let's see here. So you can vim classes things to, sh to shut down, I guess. It's possible that I just pressed the, a random E button. Hint leak spawn MPV. So is this the one that actually will open up the th the video in in um MPV so you don't have to watch the ads? Is that what that does? How does that actually work? Like, I don't know how any of these key bindings work, so. Oh, are you kidding me? It's using your crappy font. Get this off my system. What is wrong with you? <laughs> Get Comic Sans off my system.
I think most That's desktop really cool. Linux users probably start off with using Ubuntu. I know I did. I started using desktop Linux about 13, 14 years ago, and I started with Ubuntu, and it was a great distribution. I still love Ubuntu. And these days, of course, I use Arch and Arch-based distributions. Okay. That is really cool. Also, it's very interesting that YouTube, without any cookies whatsoever, managed to put a, a DistroTube thing on the front page. Granted, it would have seen some probably from my searching of DuckDuckGo earlier. But I'm not. I'm not. I'm not zoomed in. In oh, wait, you know, I am actually zoomed in on. Yeah, that came through better. <laughs> uh, I forgot that I zoomed in so people could see. It looks like common, Comic Sans. Like, you probably can't see it there at the bottom. It doesn't matter. <laughs> I was just laughing at it. Oh. So things are I stole somebody else's configuration file and did everything else. Uh, <laughs> what am I supposed to do? <laughs> I suppose I could go back and s let's see here. So cycle status bar shown always never. So is that what? Uh, that takes care of that. That's cool. Okay. And let's see. XT takes sh the tabs. So... That works, that's cool. Even shows I'm live, we could go Inception. Live stream within the, within a live stream. So XX uh, does both. That's cool. A few weeks ago, I installed Ubuntu Fresh on a new PC and watched a couple of YouTube videos without signing in and YouTube immediately recognized me and started recommending the usual videos. Yeah, YouTube is scary like that. Time to rice. <laughs> the the alright, so here's what's funny. Actually I should go here. You guys can actually see me again. Um that computer behind me is what I've been running Debian on for the last month. And most of my Debian long term review is done. But what I've decided to do is do the entire thing in b-roll so all you're going to see in video form other than you know probably my face I, I i might show the webcam or whatever while i'm talking over it but the actual footage from debian is just going to be me ricing it over and over again or at least one time so that's that that should come if i get my ass around to editing it it should happen tonight but and you guys should get it tomorrow but if not it'll be tuesday i'll be happy to install something other than debian on there I don't know what I don't know what um distro I will go with next. It won't be Gen 2. I'm just promising you you <laughs> that. Uh, that computer would take three weeks to to compile a kernel. That's how old it is. Space mono. Okay. Well originally it looked like his weird font. Tyler uses a weird font, and it, I make fun of him for it every time. Yeah, it's it's bullseye. I like it a lot. The install of it was stupid, but... Yeah, I like Debian quite a bit. I had no problems with it at all. Uh, I liked Sparky Linux that I tried yesterday way better, though. Just because it was easier to install. There was no hiding of ISOs. And it just felt more like a rant, uh, modern distro to me. 
Like if you install Debian and then install XFCE, now this isn't this isn't a Debian problem really, but XFCE in its original most uh, native form looks like it came out of the 1990s. Haha, <laughs> I love my weird fonts. Yeah. <laughs> I'm very I don't know, I'm very uninteresting when it comes to uninteresting when it comes to fonts. I just use Hack Nerd font or JetBrains Mono. That's those are the two that I use. Try open BSD or free BSD. I might do that for a video. I don't think I'd put it on that computer back there, though. I don't think I'd want to use it for a whole month. Oh, by the way, Tyler, are you still on uh, open BSD? I'm very curious because uh, Peter and I have a bet. He says to, that you're going to end today, and I said you're going to end tomorrow. Go back to Linux. I'm very curious. We got to know to settle this bet. What do you, he's not. What did he go to? I, I noticed he's probably, probably not listening to me anymore. You installed Art. <laughs> Arch. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, I gave you an extra day. I had more confidence in you than uh, I should have. That's sad. Good news is there are no stakes because I, I know he would have told me I had installed Gen Two if I lost. Have I tried Slackware? No, I have not tried Slackware. I've heard just very little about it. I know it's really old. That's about as much Slackware as I, I I know about, other than... Hey, <laughs> spend... Yeah, I know. Uh, oh, goodness. Uh, it doesn't surprise me that he went away. I'm just surprised he didn't make it till Monday. I thought he would make it the whole weekend. Although I will say, the, whatever you use to record the podcast on Thursday, Tyler, worked out really well. So we, you should definitely do that again. There has to you, there has to be like an audio at, uh, recording thing that you can use in the terminal on Linux. I must install Gen 2 now. I insist. No, <laughs> I have a Patreon goal of three hundred fifty dollars a month. That I, then I will install Gen 2 again. I set that arbitrarily high so that I never actually have to do it. Please install Gen 2. No. <laughs> uh, I'm not even... I, even if I wanted to, I'm not prepared to do that tonight. Last time, it just ate up my internet for whatever reason. After I was done with that stream, I went out to the living room, and the rest of the family was like, Why was the internet so slow? It's... it's Patreon, Patreon link. My, my Patreon link is literally right underneath my face. You can't miss it. <laughs> I put it on every video. <laughs> v, you know what? I could try Vib again. You know what? I don't, I don't mind that. Seeing as how Tyler has done my configuring of Cute Browser for me. I wouldn't actually... I wonder if it would be better to build it. I wonder if that's the reason why I had such a hard time. Because it would not update through the AUR. Ginger is the most user-friendly distro, trust me. <laughs> You're like a used car salesman. This this car only has 300 miles on it, trust me. Oh, well, we know uh, Tyler uses Brave Search. And as we can tell, uh, no, I'm actually searching for V Browser. Thank you. There we go. <laughs> so true. 
<laughs> I find it funny. Okay, let's see if we can actually build this. Download, download, install, app image, Fedora, Arch, Pac-Man. You can't get the binary. I'll probably just install it through Arch then. I've never tried NYXT. Now, I was using that, uh, the, there's one called, like, Ghost Browser or Ghostium or something that came out a little while ago, um, but I never got past, like, the initial, like, beta of it. <laughs> CentOS. Yeah. <laughs> as long as, I mean, does CentOS have another desktop environment other than GNOME? That's the, the last. Uh, like I saw somebody running CentOS as their desktop as their main driver, and they were using GNOME. So I'm assuming that's like the, all they have. But that's just an assumption. You probably, I mean, you could install whatever you want on. I'm sure. Um, Doesn't ship any, so it'd be basically just like Debian only, you know, worse probably. GNOME is the only one in big desktop in the repos by default. I, that's what I probably figured. I seem to remember hearing about that. Like I saw somebody using it. Like I don't know why you'd use CentOS as a like a desktop distro. I, like, I don't know, understand why you would, but... Now, somebody was arguing with me the other day. I think it was... Maybe it was English Bob. I can't remember. It was somebody on uh, TFL's channel uh, in their comments. They were talking, saying that Fedora was... The only reason you should use Fedora is if you're a, a Red Hat developer. Like, I know a lot of people who run Fedora who aren't... Who don't, run, you know, work for Red Hat. Lots of people. I mean, it's not the most popular browser... Or disk driver, but lots of people use it who aren't Red Hat users. I wonder how you is, is there a way to, to like zoom in so you can actually see this? My eye my you probably have to change the font or something. Let's see here, make vibe R C. This command can be used to write all runtime settings, keyboard mappings, and custom commands back to the RC file located in Vib's data folder. If the config file startup argument is present, only this VibeRC will be used, and it will also be a destination of this Vib make Vibre the RC command. I can't say that. The color scheme is also written if it is changed or if, it, if full is provided. I never use Cube Browser and buddies with English Bob, by the way. English Bob is great. I don't think he subscribes to my channel, though. I've never seen him comment on mine. But he, I know he uh, argues with TFL all the time. Fedora is pretty damn great. Second only to Gen 2. Well... I don't know about the whole Gentoo thing, but I, Fedora is good. 
If you want to use Wayland, if you're have your heart set on using Wayland and pipe wire and all that stuff, Fedora is the best way to go because it's got the best support for it out of the box. And trying to install Wayland and pipe wire on an Arch system is just asking for pain. We all know how much Matt likes his, you know, I don't like him at all. <laughs> I, would say, I would subscribe, but I won't, don't subscribe. <laughs> I'm not sure which I hate more, Gnome or, uh, uh, I've lost my train of thought. I got Alzheimer's. I can't remember. There's something else that I hate just as much. Linux Mint, maybe. <laughs> I could I could make another video on Linux Mint and lose another half dozen subscribers, which I find I just find utter, utterly entertaining. Fedora is the only innovative de desktop distro we have these days. I don't know about that, but maybe. They're definitely trying more stuff than other other distros, that's for sure. But that's not, you know what? I really wish that Ubuntu had chosen like KDE for their desktop environment because it would just make it seem like they're trying new stuff better. I don't know what make, made me think of that, but that's true. Gnome or Gen two? I don't hate Gen two. I <laughs> I just don't see the purpose in it. Uh, let's try a torrid love affair with GNOME. Uh, I don't have GNOME installed on this computer. I have, let's see, I can show you the things that I have. We do CD, let's see, let's see user share, I can't type worth a damn word today. Share X, X sessions and do an LS here. I have awesome BSPWM, DWM, Herp Slough, i3, Openbox, Qtile, Spectre, XFC, and Xmonad. Those are the things I have installed on this computer. I had Plasma, um, but I install it. And if you guys want to try, if you guys are running Arc, if you guys want to know why I like Arco, let me sh let me go to this. Uh, Arco Linux uh, Dex Desktop Trasher. This thing here, if you've gone through and installed a desktop that you want to get rid of, I believe this will only work on Arco, by the way, but it may work on Arch. You can actually go through and uninstall a desktop from this from your computer using this program. It's awesome. Now, it's not 100% functional. It's uh, definitely <laughs> something that you use with caution because it rewrites your entire .configuration file which is annoying but if you want to get rid of plasma this was amazing it just completely deleted everything it's very it was very good so that's why i like arco come on matt we all know you want to install gnome before recording so there's no proof <laughs> um i i'm trying to think oh i have a, a lenovo over here that's running ubuntu 21.04 that is the closest i have to uh running gnome and it hasn't been started in months it may not even turn on <laughs> so it's mandatory to use by the way free modification <laughs> yeah eric is great on i just like i installed regular arch when i was the last time i hopped i went to regular arch and it was just it, I mean, it worked fine, and I could do it. It just felt like I was doing way more maintenance than I needed to do or wanted to do. So I just came back to Arco, and everything just works. It's so good.
why, why Pac-Man is an honestly terrible package manager. Pac-Man is the best package manager. <laughs> so the the yeah, I told you the ones that I have installed on this computer, but on the computer back there I have XFCE and VSPWM. So there's no GNOME on that one either. Pac-Man is a game. <laughs> we gotta, guys, gotta remember. I don't have very much uh, experience with Portage, so I can't actually tell you whether or not it's better than Pac-Man. But I'm gonna tell you right now, it's not better than Pac-Man. Pac-Man is just the best. And it works so good. What is Portage? Portage is the Gen 2 package manager. And the, the glory of GNOME on Gen 2. <laughs> If I were to install Gen 2, I would not be installing GNOME. That's for sure. Although, we are going to be doing another challenge on the podcast, Tyler. And that could be your challenge. We both have to install GNOME on Gen 2 and use it for a month. That's our challenge. Pack person. <laughs> Compiling GNOME you know, for 10 days. It probably, I, I don't, I don't know. It probably wouldn't take 10 days, but it'd feel like it. Do a stream with Gen 2 and get up with, you know, no. Uh, I've already stated my uh, rules for when I will install Gen 2 again. So there's a good, like a GNOME binary or something that you can install. All right, in my uh, uh, Sparky Linux first look yesterday, one of the desktops that they let you install is called GNOME Classic. Does anybody know what GNOME Classic actually is? I've never actually... heard of it. What is GNOME Classic? GNOME Classic is a feature for users to prefer a more traditional desktop experience. While GNOME Classic is based on GNOME 3 technologies, it provides a number of changes to the user interface, such as applications and places menus on the top bar. So basically, it's GNOME 2 and a window list in the bottom of the screen. You can use the applications menu on the top bar to launch application activities. Overview is available by selecting the activities uh, overview items from the menu. The ac to access activities overview... Show me a picture. I'd like to see a picture. GNOME, GNOME, GNOME Classic. That's really exactly what it is. That's GNOME 2. I mean, that's literally what that is. <laughs> okay. Um, it's even using like the old Ubuntu style. Uh, icons, if that's actually GNOME Classic. I use Plasma, the best GNOME out there. 
plasma is good. It just installs so many packages. I go on. Uh, the Linux experiment yesterday did a, a video about his 15 apps that he uses for work. Or something. I don't even know what it was, the topic was about. But he, he was talking about Dolphin. And every time I see somebody use Dolphin. It's like oh man I wish I could use Dolphin. Because Dol Dolphin it has to be the best. File, file manager out there. But just installs so many. Packages. So you can't just have Dolphin install it. It installs basically the entire KDE stack. Yeah it does look exactly like Mate. Doesn't it? Probably doesn't have nearly as many uh, like customizability options uh, as Mate does. And I haven't used Mate in ages. I should use Mate again. For whatever reason, Mate just doesn't like me. The last two times I used it, which have to have been over a year ago, maybe even longer, it, cr it just like, crashed my computer. Yeah, just a t just a ton of dependencies for for Dolphin. I don't, but that's the same with every KDE uh, Plasma like application. Like, if you install Kden Live, you get a ton of KDE uh, dependencies, just a ton of them that you don't even need. I mean, they don't need to really need to be there. It's really dumb. Unfortunately, uh, Kden Live is like the only video editor that actually works. Um, so. Or at least the op at least open source video editor. I I tried that all of out that somebody pointed me towards, and it just crashed almost instantaneously. When I edit a video, I can't have it crashing. It just has to be stable. Yeah, that's true. That there's a lot of applications out there that use a ton of dependencies that they don't actually need. I don't know what I did wrong, but I found KDE search to be terrible on any distro. I think you have to run the index command in the brow in the terminal for to fix that problem. Because like, I, I I might be a hundred percent off base on this, but I think that KRunner is based off the locate command in the terminal. It might be wrong, but I think it is. Or if it, and if it's not, it's something like that. ranger I, like i use ranger like i have it installed by the way you type in gnome classic thank you brave search for giving us pictures of gnomes <laughs> uh that's not the right one um that's get crack and i forget there we go that's ranger yeah that's the right one so i have ranger installed i just don't use it nearly as much as i used to um, and I don't really know why. I used Shotcut. I couldn't get into it. it. It just was too weird for me. I th uses Baloo. Okay, I didn't... Maybe I didn't know that. I don't know. I knew it was something. So, Ken Dog, Ken Dog McAwesome, first of all, great name. Uh, <laughs> um, you can get drag and drop to work in Ranger using Dragon, but it's not great, especially in a tiling window manager because it opens up a little like window while you're dra while you're dragging, and it's up here, like up up in the top left corner, and sometimes it doesn't listen to your floating rules, so you and it ends up going full screen and just ruining your your layout it's a mess so i guess we could find out 
let's go back to this here. I'm very curious how we can go about changing the colors. We need to change the colors. Here we go. Here's some colors. Because frankly, well, there's a lot of colors there. We're still going up. There's still more colors. All right, here we go. This looks like the, like the beginning. Uh, I wonder if there's an easy way to... I'm going to look for a shortcut. Grove box. Cute browser. Usage. To use the cute base 16 cute browser, you copy one of the confiling config files to the themes. It does have a grub box theme. Oh, it looks pretty. Matt, have you ever tried Index FM? I have not. What is Index FM? Full text substring index based on Bros Wheeler. I'm assuming that this is not the exact the thing you're looking you're talking about. I'm assuming that's what that is, is a file manager. All right, dear developers, always include a screenshot of your thing here. Oh, here we go. Why don't you put this at the top? That's not a terminal file manager. That's a, oh, it has split panes. This is a GTK file manager. Wonder why I said it was KDE. I mean, it looks like a GTK file manager. It has the top bar of a one. What is this written in? Index is a file manager that works on desktops, Android, and Plasma Mobile. Index lets you use you browse your system files and applications. Is this going to be like the thing that's going to be replacing Dolphin for Plasma Mobile or something? It is, it is Maui Kit. That's what it is. Not cute. I always install things when people tell me to install them. Animations are pretty. I just wanted a different view. There we go. Oh, that's a little small. Um, I'm convinced that can that Gentoo can be for everyone. You can, he, and and then Peter says you can even be Matt and still use it. That sounded like an insult, Peter. Yeah, it's Maui. It, the what what confused me about the when I said it was GTK, this thing here looks like a GTK the top bar. It's Maui kit. That's also the reason why it doesn't um, follow any of the theming that I had done on this computer because Maui kit doesn't follow themes on on anything, as far as I know. Because it doesn't follow the cute stuff and it doesn't follow the gtk uh uh rules so you 
how you'd actually go about you know racing this i wouldn't have a clue <laughs> right <laughs> I, I donated five dollars to Gentoo today. It was easier than easier than compiling GNOME. How is the keyboard controls? I'm assuming you're talking about this. I don't see. See the, the it, problem with this is it's not. Oh, here we go. Here's settings right here. Navigation configure. Grid items. Save session. Oh, you. That's awesome. That's. I've been looking for that for ages. A. A. A, a term. A GUI file manager that remembers where you were when you left off. There's so few of them that do that. Uh, I think Pac Man. Or Pac FM. I, I think that that's one that does it. I'm not sure. I could be. It doesn't have anything here about key bindings, though. shortcuts this is literally it here we go so control t is new tab control w close tab path edit terminal f4 split i wonder if that four thing actually works no uh find tab control h select all control a select control shift arrows and it looks like you can change these Maybe can't. Nope. Can't change them as far as I can see. Nope. It does look nice. I, I would... I'm not... In, I don't think I could use it because it doesn't follow the rest of my theme. So it stick out like a sore thumb. But it looks nice. I bet you it looks nice like this too. Yeah, that's what it's meant for. Mobile. Maui and Maui Kit and uh, Flutter are kind of, I mean, they're obviously different languages and design philosophies and stuff, but they're both kind of focused on being able to create UIs that are, you know, available cross platform. So that's index. That remembering position is definitely intriguing. All right, now where was I? Oh, we were going to do colors. Nautilus is bloated, but for no reason. So, like with um, with Dolphin, Dolphin t comes with a ton of dependencies, right? But it's functional and it's very customizable. Nautilus is just bloated for no reason other than it's tied to the GNOME desktop. So it run it runs a lot of the stuff that goes on in the background. Index has a built-in uh, text editor. What was that? There was a distro out there that had a whole bunch of custom software. Uh, that had a, like a controversy a few years, a few few months ago. They were fighting with the Distro Watch guys. Um, God, that's gonna drive me nuts. It was a a, a Debian based slash Ubuntu based or something Distro. I'm gonna remember everything about it except for the name. Like, it doesn't matter. Background color of the completion widget for odd arrows. The, the problem I have with this is what the hell is a, the completion widget, right? Nitrix OS, that's exactly what it was. Anyways, they had a, their own file manager. I believe it was built... Is, is that index? Is that the same thing? Am I... Like, I know they were using a... a, 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 a file manager that was... Uh, written in Maui, I think. I'm pretty sure. Anyways, I'm gonna.
To use the Base 16 Cube browser, you can copy one of the config files in themes to the config.py or use the curl. But I don't want to overwrite the whole config.py. I just want the colors. So we can just go up here and see if we can do the um, default. And then we're looking for... Rub box dark. This one here. And then if we can oh, before I do this. I'm going to cp config.py into config.py.old just in case. And then we go through here and do to here. and see if this worked. Error config occurred while reading config.py. While setting colors.messages.error.border, no option. Okay. Did the rest of it come up? Yes, look at that. Oh, it's so good. Woo! That's so much better. Is the part of the input where you have your matches and every second line is different. So it's this thing. Yeah, yeah, just your watch is kind of rigged. Nitrix, yeah. Or however you pronounce it. Dead, dead, daddy time, Mono. That is a good, good font name, isn't it? All right, anyways. Back here. Uh, what I think I'm going to do, actually, before... We'll just change that. I don't know if I need to change it to everywhere, but we can. And then which was the, well, where was the error at again? It was called colors.messages.error. Okay. Um, Color.messages. Yeah, I wish I'd give you a line number. Colors.messages. Dot error. Which one is it? Dot border, boater, boater, boater. I'm pretty sure that's probably supposed to be border. We'll change that to border and and see if that actually works. I'm glad I'm not, I'm, to know I'm not the only person that does. Uh, yeah, there we go. Oh, and look at that. It's just. Mm. Grub box, so good. And <laughs> daddy, it, 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 Tyler was was daddy time. One of the ones that you is that what you picked or is that default? Because <laughs> I kind of want to know. <laughs> <laughs>
I'm not going to say anything against District 2. He's a good guy. Uh, and you can't complain that he steals topics. Because he does steal topics, but we all steal topics. Uh, that racing one he did today originally came from Brody. So. That's just the way the Linux YouTuber space works. Alias CD pseudo reboot. Oh, that'd be so cool. <laughs> Shoot pseudo shut down now is probably better. <laughs> it might not use a thing called Breeze Dark. Um, use Grubbox. It's so good. Seriously, every day that I use Grubbox, I like it a little bit more. It's so good. Uh, and the thing is, this is these not even my favorite color like i don't i'm not a big like brown guy i'm usually much more bright you know i like the bright guys the bright colors the 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 best youtube theft of topic lately was uh mental outlaw and luke smith one day mental outlaw said i switched to bsd and then the very next day luke smith i switched to bsd <laughs> it was the greatest thing ever <laughs> yeah grubbox is great it's so good matter of fact i i went through and did grubbox on that one it's going to be the b-roll for my distro or debian review Rory does a lot of good work too, yeah. But I, I think they all do. I, um, like I said, stealing topics from each other is not going to be the biggest flaw of any floss tuber ever. Mental outlaw is Luke Smith defix. See, people keep saying that, and is it true? Like I don't even know it's true at this point. It's been sent so many times. Like, everybody thinks that they're the same person, but I actually don't know if that's true or not. Like, it can't be proven. You're right. So you hear what? I think they stole the BSD stuff from Zany. Although I don't, I, I'm pretty sure Zany did it after them, so. I'm pretty sure they also chose free BSD. Maybe I was wrong. Maybe they did open BSD too. Yeah, Brody does a good job of do of doing his homework. I don't do homework at all. That's my shtick. Uh, you watch my channel, you'll know I have no clue what I'm talking about. That's the that's the thing. <laughs> so, yeah. You watch me, I have no clue what I'm talking about. If you listen to me, that's your problem. <laughs> the mastermind behind this. He, he, well. See, Tyler is a, he's the kind of guy who hops a lot. So he has all the ideas. He, I think, Tyler, you hop, you distro hop more than I ever did, which is quite impressive. <laughs> Mental Outlaw is just Luke Smith's cooking channel. <laughs> it is funny that they're both into cooking. Um, there are, is a lot of evidence that they are the same person. Yeah, he doesn't do Linux stuff anymore. His His... All right, so I'm not going to disparage him, but he does a lot of ranty videos now. Uh, and the the last one, the one he did where he was talking about how he, he knew a guy who installed Manjaro who then uh, couldn't figure it out or something, and then he blamed it on Linux, was just really weird. Like, just because the people you know aren't smart enough to handle Linux doesn't make Linux bad. <laughs> It was, it was a really weird video for him. For him.
<laughs> so I, I should hop a bit, make an uninformed video about everything, and then blame others for stealing my content. That's exactly what you should do. All this hopping, y'all still avoiding Gentoo. Now, see here, Tyler did install Gentoo. He was on it for a day and a half, is what he said, I think. So, that's proven wrong. At least one of the crew here has gone through and installed Gentoo. And TFL tried. The, when I did my um, Gentoo stream, he tried to, to go along with it right at the same time, but he, I, he ran into just as many problems as I did. <laughs> I suppose I could do this so you, you guys can actually see. It's like a. Be easier than straining my neck again. <laughs> Is the AU har are that hard to integrate into other distros? Um, I know that they're doing it for Debian, but it's not going to be the same thing. It's just going to be the same concept. Because for the Debian one, they're going to be using that Debian, Debian package builder, so it's going to be a little bit different. The problem with taking a concept for the AUR into other distros, like for Debian-based ones and whatever, is going to be getting community you know adoption of it. Getting people to use it and actually package pa packages for it. Because the AUR is only good. The only reason why we proclaim the AUR to be the best thing ever is because it has all the packages. If it wasn't, if the AUR had nothing in it, nobody would give a shit. I mean, it's just the honest truth. So, it, it, for those other projects that are trying to make AURs for other distros, or for basically Debian based distros, the only way that it's going to ever be successful is to get packages in it. And it has to work well, obviously. Yep, DT is great. I I'm never going to say work too much, too many words against DT. I'll probably disagree with him from time to time, but This channel would not be where it's at without DT's call out, so you're not going to see me uh, become his mortal enemy or anything. Why Microsoft Edge is the devil. Somebody else can make that video. I'm not going to be making that video. Uh, I, I'm not using Edge anymore, people. It's okay. Uh, I'm using Firefox again. I've come back to the, to the light. I, I, I went Darth Vader for a little bit, and then just like at the end of the movie, I reversed positions. The Gentoo wiki is better than the Arch wiki. I'm going to have to disagree with you there. The Arch wiki is way better. I'm not saying the Gentoo wiki is bad. I'm just saying the Arch wiki is better. Yeah, PPAs are terrible. I've, I've been using Debian now for a month, and I have not installed a single PPA on there. I've been completely... Yeah. Hey, you want to? I'm actually. I do have cube I'm browser open. It's like right here, but I'm not signed in on anything yet. So that's the reason why you're seeing Firefox right now. Good for you for acknowledging what DT did for you. Yeah, I'm very thankful for that. Uh, I definitely won't be near 4,000 subscribers. I would probably be around, probably approaching 2,000 subscribers at this at that point. Because I was at 400, and I'd only been doing it for a few months when he did a shout-out. Um, but I wouldn't have grown nearly as fast. For sure. Don't use PPAs on Debian. I think I saw one of DT's rap videos, yeah. 
he did like a recap for his thousands video or something like that. So here's something interesting. DT has been doing YouTube for three or four years or something like that. Uh, and he just went over a thousand videos like a month or so ago. I've been doing it since September and I've already done over 250 videos. I think. I wonder how many... I wonder if Social Blade will tell you how many videos you've done. Because I might have made that, made that number up. Number of uploads. 263 videos since September. So in a year. So I'm probably about the same. Because it'd it take about four years then to get to the to 1,000. I think we can all agree that no matter whether you like the Gen 2 wiki or the Arch wiki, that the Ubuntu wiki is terrible. Ubuntu does have a wiki, by the way. Does I don't think anybody even knows that Ubuntu has a wiki. Because nobody goes to it. This is the Ubuntu wiki. Uh, good luck navigating this, by the way. Like there's there's stuff here, but um, I mean you you think when when you when you go to the Arch Wiki, I'm just gonna go to a random page here. When you go to the Arch Wiki, here, I mean you have a ton of links and stuff to where you need to go and all that kind of stuff. But uh, the the Ubuntu Wiki, there's like what, five or six links here? That's it. And then two of them are weekly newsletters. <laughs> Get involved, teams. Like, where's the rest of the stuff here? I mean, you can go through, and I'm, I'm assuming that, like, these will take you to more stuff. Um, But, yeah, that's the that's the Ubuntu wiki. That's, and that's like, takes you to the Ubuntu discourse. That's not even part of the wiki. So why this even exists, um, like, it's really weird. Yeah, I know they move most of their stuff to Ask Ubuntu, so it's not fair to make fun of them for it, but the, it still exists, so. Um, I know they're talking on the Ubuntu podcast about how they could, like, revamp it or whatever. <laughs> well, I had to... Di Tyler, I had to divert the 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 chat away from saying that the Arch Wiki was bad and that the Gentoo Wiki was good. Yeah, like it's still there. The Ubuntu wiki is still there. Eh, I think it's great. The like, like, but it's never gonna be. I I like that it's just it's kind of frozen in time. Like you know, there's a, like that one shill in the in the basement of Canonical that says that whose job it is to uh, make sure that the wiki page like stays there or something. It's really weird. Yeah, that's a good point. A lot of people do their uh, how-to tutorials for Ubuntu. Anyway, so. That's because there's nothing on the Ubuntu wiki. Not really. That's the way I read it, though, Jacob, is that you said the Arch wiki was bad. That's the way I read it. Doesn't matter if you said it or not. I'm you implied it. It's definitely the way it's true. The Gentoo install guide is better than Arches. You say so. Mm. All right, guys. I've been going now for an hour and a half. This is a longer stream than normal. I don't think I actually did a damn thing other than copy Tyler's uh, cute browser thing. I did install Veeb. Veeb is here somewhere. I might give that another try, but I'm I'm thinking about making 
So actually, I'm going to do that right now. So I'm going to cd .dwm sxhkd hkdrc and change this cute browser. That way, I, I, I have done switched the cute browser as my official browser. And it has a Grubbox theme. And if we wanted to open up, because Tyler has all the key bindings that I actually wanted to you know implement, we can actually go through and play a video just like that. Hey everybody, welcome back to Linux Cast. I'm your host, Look at those handsome fellas. Tyler, how are you doing, Tyler? Doing good, doing good. So I this should is the link. Definitely watch that podcast. It was a good podcast. That podcast, we didn't get to the main topic. <laughs> like we didn't even get to the main topic. The main topic was supposed to be native Linux gaming. We spent the entire time bitching about elementary OS. It was so good. Uh who needs a who needs a main topic? Void doesn't need an install guide. <laughs> okay. I'm very, very protective of the Arch Wiki because I think it's the best. Yes, it is a successful stream. I riced something. <laughs> How do you know it's a Linux cast stream? There's a rice going on during it. I like Tyler, I like any configuration that uh, I didn't have to compile or complete. <laughs> yeah, it was it was a good podcast, man. It was, I think it was my favorite one that we've done so far. I think it's just because it was just us talking about and bullshitting and ranting and stuff. Anyways, guys, I am done. I'm ready for this pod or this stream to end. So. Before I go, I'd like to take a moment to thank my current patrons. Devon, Chris, East Coast Web, Gen 2 is Fun 2, Marcus, Meglin, Sven, Jackson, Knife and Tool, Mitchell, Mr. Fox, Arts Center, American Camp. Uh, thanks, everybody, for watching. I'll uh, see you next week. Thanks, guys.